So we have this recurring problem at my house where the lightning strikes and as soon as it does, power goes out, it comes back on, unit doesn't communicate. And so what happens is, is that with the lightning, it's near earth strike or a strike on a pole or whatever the case may be, you get these little transients, high voltage spikes, and it causes my control to go on the fritz, causes everything to kind of go on and off all at once too. I know it happens when there's lightning storms and I know it happens when the power goes out. I don't know exactly what's causing it, whether it's the fact that everything, all the power on everything is coming up at once and we're having some induced currents going into the low voltage circuit or whether it's directly due to the lightning itself and the transients. But what I do know is that we consistently have this problem. So I'm going to do a fix that I've heard a couple times that helps when you don't run shielded cable with communicating systems, which I didn't. You see right here, regular old thermostat wire where you can use the leftover conductors, which we have four leftover conductors, which is a sort of a shield by grounding them on one end. This is our ABCD connectors, which are our green, yellow, white, red. And that's all that we're using for our 24 volts and our communications. And our red and white are 24 volts, yellow and green are communications. But we have these leftover wires, as you can see here, our orange, brown, black, and blue that are unused. We're gonna take those and we're going to ground them from both sides. And we're gonna ground them in here and leave them open on the other end so we don't create a ground loop. So when you are using almost as a sort of shielding, then you only connect them on one end, not on both. So this is going to the outside right here, just our green and yellow, because the outside unit has its own transformer. And then inside, we've got four additional. So we've got six additional going outside and four additional going inside. And so we're gonna take all of these and we're gonna connect it in to a proper ground, a good quality ground. And looking in this unit, we can get a ground inside this right here. But I think what we're gonna do is just run it through with these other wires and then ground it here against the blower. This is a factory grounding lug, so we're just going to use that as our ground. Something I do want to be clear about is that the reason why we're connecting them together here under wire nuts is so that way we don't double lug under these ABCD connectors because that's one of the common causes that we see a poor connection is trying to fit two conductors under a single lug. So we connect them further back from the condenser and the controller. So that's also where we're going to pull the extra wires off of that we're going to then connect to ground as our, as our shield. So whenever I'm gonna to twist together a lot of wires, I strip them long, even though of course I'm not gonna leave them that long. It just makes it a lot easier for me to really tightly twist them together. Instead of doing this in like a shoddy way, I'm going to uh, actually connect them all together to a larger gauge stranded wire using a uh, heat shrink butt splice, and then I'm gonna connect it down to a ring connector so that way it connects nicely here. All right, so they were too big when I put them all together to get under one butt splice. So I'm gonna do two separate butt splices and then I'll, I'll splice the two pieces of stranded underneath one end. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. A crimper, it's designed for insulated terminals and then I'll heat that up to heat shrink that down real nice. But it's, these are really, really tight. I really like this crimper. It's even got the color codes on the jaws so you know which insulated terminal to put under which jaw. Now the one thing to be careful with though is you don't wanna to put too large a terminal underneath one of these jaws, otherwise you gotta take the whole thing apart to get it back out. All right, so I'm gonna heat shrink down this first set just to be dramatic so you can see it. When you're using a flame like this, you gotta really make sure to stand it off a little bit so you don't melt the wires. I mean, in this case, we're only using them for a ground anyway, so it's not that critical. It's not gonna hurt if I compromise the conductor a little bit, but for demonstration purposes, it's just important that you don't overheat the wire. Oh, that one I got. I generally use a smaller torch than this. A heat gun would be the preferred way, but this is what I happen to have on my truck, so this is what we're using. If I was doing this on a conductor where I was worried about potential shorting, I would keep the wires a little shorter underneath. In this particular case, I'm more interested in connection than I am about, you know, preventing a short. But again, I mean, this is definitely going to be a solid connection. Got all of our, all of our additional conductors. Butt spliced, connected together with number 14 stranded wire underneath a single ring connector. Hopefully the idea is, is that any inductance or little signals that are picked up in the wire will be redirected harmlessly to ground on one side um, versus causing a communication fault. At least that's the idea, but we'll see and I will report back and let you know if this fixes it or not. But I do know that in several cases where maybe you should have run shielded cable but didn't, this is a fix that actually uh, serves the purpose. All right, I'm Brian with HVAC School. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.